my name is Glenn Dyer and you are here to watch my pick for the top 10 best movies of 2015. They're super, yes they're awesome. About that fact I couldn't be any more blunt. They're freaking super, they're so good each one. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? I was worried, just a little, that maybe all of the films this year would suck. But I got lucky, cause some were super. God, I haven't felt this good since my last pizza! First of all, a teensy weensy disclaimer. In none of the lists will I mention the the eight Oscar films that I reviewed, and those would include Birdman, Whiplash, The Fury of Everything, The Intimidation Game, Selma, uh, Grand, The Grand Budapest Hotel, Boyhood, and American Sniper. None of those will be counted in any of the lists. However, they will be in the giant ranking order that will be in the very last video. Uh, but the reason for this is that some of those came out as early as, I think, March 2014. So instead of trying to differentiate which ones count and which ones don't, I'm just going to take a big old hacksaw to it and say none of them for any of the... Excuse me. Uh, same goes for Entourage. Um, since that was just a preview, but fair not, it will not be in this list. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number 10! The Martian. Yes, uh, the big action adventure space film with, I think I've said, uh, believable space physics. <laughs> yes, maybe not entirely realistic. I know, I, as I predicted, Neil deGrasse Tyson pointed out some flaws in that, but it is believable space physics and. That's applaudable, especially these days, when most people wouldn't give a crap. It was incredibly enjoyable to sit through, and it still maintains that kind of power to this day. Lots of great action, great characters, and really smart design. So, uh, yeah, easily makes it onto this list. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number nine. The Green Inferno! <laughs> I admit, I might just be flubbing it, this one a little. Uh, it's mostly on here, if only because, oh, I really want movies like this to be a little more common. I mean, God, I want, I love gore movies so much, and this film is not the greatest movie ever made, but it is trying its hardest. It's inspired by Cannibal Holocaust, which is well known for starting the found footage genre and is not actually that good a movie. But hell! Cannibals eating people! What's more the love? Uh, definitely check this one out, give it a little more attention because I want more movies like this, just enjoyable schlock. That's what the world needs more of. Enjoyable, gory, rated R, barely not NC-17 schlock. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number 8. Ex Machina. Some of the best sci-fi that I have ever seen in years. A compelling story, great cast of characters, and pretty awesome special effects. This really does have... <laughs> I have something for everyone, and the ending is unbelievable, and thought-provoking, and this is super smart, and it's awesome, and yeah, watch it. It's pretty friggin' cool. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number seven. Selfless. Scene number eight. Almost. Uh, except this one isn't, is... <sighs> Let's see, I think what makes this even better than Ex Machina, though, is just... <sighs> the compelling range of emotion that it goes through. And even though it's, I admit, um, 
a slightly more predictable than Ex Machina, it still makes up for that with just how involved you get in the story and with everyone involved. And I think that just gives it the slightest edge to put it just one number above and have it fill in this slot. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number six. Kingsman, The Secret Service. Aha, uh -huh. out of the six billion spy movies that came out this year, this one is easily the best. Great actors, great story. Slightly cliched, but in a <laughs> in a gr in a good way. Uh, really super memorable action scenes, and just a great homage to those old 1960s spy movies. And it, and I'd really like to see more of them, but then again, there is more of them, just not as good. As I said, definitely the best spy film that's come out this year, and, well, <laughs> number six. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number five. Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah, I've jumped onto the bad and wagon, I've sold out by Pepsi-Cola. Uh, yeah, this film's awesome. It was an amazing experience in the theater. And what more could I want? <laughs> Honestly, it's not the most thought-provoking film. It doesn't have the most epic story or anything, but it did everything right. Almost, it did almost everything it had to do to be a great Star Wars movie, and that's pretty kick-ass. So, th yeah, no regrets. It's number five. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number four. Straight out of Compton. Boom! Straight out of Compton. So kick ass. God, I love every minute of this film. The music is awesome. The message is awesome. Everything in it is awesome. It's just so awesome. What more can you say? Straight out of Compton, mofo. I'm I'm very very white. Straight out of Compton. None of these were made by a thumb. Wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number three. It follows. Yeah, if the Green Inferno happened to bring back gore films slightly, it follows just brought back horror films in general, and the. In recent years, all these stale Blumhouse pictures have just been flooding the markets and draining everyone's brain cells, but every now and then you get at something great, like uh, Evil Dead or It Follows. Genuinely scary and unique and really cool to watch. As I mentioned in the review, this one actually sort of scared me. And that's cool. That doesn't happen very often. It... It's a marvel to watch, and yeah, if every horror film was at this level of quality, we'd be living in an awesome, awesome world. Instead, they're all like Blumhouse, which is, <laughs> well, that's stuff for tomorrow's list. None of these were made by a thumb, wasn't that one oh so brilliant? Number two, Mad Max Fury Road. Never before have I seen a movie that was so immersive, so well blocked, so well designed, with such awesome special effects, practical and CGI working together in harmony, as not the most fuck compelling plot, not the most di not the most depth of character, but an awesome movie. What more could you want? Honestly, when you watch this film, you forget you're sitting in a theater. You forget that you're <laughs> sitting, that you're just in your chair relaxing. You feel like you're, like, just invested in these characters. And you're just in the totally different world watching all this crap happen. And it is an amazing, 
cinematic experience. And a great movie to boot. So it easily gets my place for number two. And now, before I announce what number one is, we're going to mention some honorable mentions! Creed was not expecting it to be as good as it was. It's actually in the number 11 slot right now. Just got beat out by The Martian simply because of how, well, how kind of smarter The Martian was. But Creed was a surprisingly good movie. Even though I'm not a fan of the Rocky series, it made me feel invested in the characters and in the story. And, well, as Brandon said in the review, made you feel like a human being. Dumb and Dumber 2! <sighs> I only felt that I had to mention this because even though it is a 20 years later sequel, it was surprisingly good and it doesn't seem to be getting any kind of recognition for that. And I think the worst offender I saw was the honest trailer for it where it pointed out the areas where it rehashed old jokes from the old movie but failed to point out that they were literally making fun of doing that. Like, in those scenes. Like, one of the ones they point out was the freaking, um... What, what's the freaking dog van car thing? And they're like, oh, it, it's in this movie too. Yeah, for like ten seconds. That was the joke. <laughs> that, it, that they immediately, like, get rid of it. <laughs> but... Yeah, I just feel it deserves at least some recognition, if not anywhere else, then here. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, the second best spy film of the year. Great action scenes. Yeah. Brooklyn went in there not knowing a damn thing about it, came out with the feels. Pretty kick-ass. Jurassic World. Basically a similar f idea to Star Wars The Force Awakens, but eh shallower characters to it, so it didn't quite make the top ten. But it was still a pretty damn good sequel to a beloved franchise, and it deserves some recognition for it. A Walk in the Woods! It's literally a movie about two dudes walking the Appalachian Trail. Two old dudes. Yet it's so entertaining. And it definitely deserves to be seen and to be recognized for just how well they pull it off. Um, Robert Redford's great in it. Definitely, check it out. Sean the Sheep Movie. In my opinion, one of the best animated films of the year. Um, and, man, it's amazing just how much it was able to accomplish without saying as much as, like, ten words. Maybe it said a few words, I don't remember. But, like, it's mostly just done through action. And it's a great thing to watch. Take your kids to see it. You'll be thoroughly entertained, and it's pretty smart, too. Rock the Cosbah. What can I say? The ending was honestly so beautiful that it just deserves to be said at least once here. Surpri surprisingly damned good movie. And was not expecting that for a later Bill Murray film, but god damn it, it was awesome. See it right now. And now, the number one movie of 2015 is... Creature. What? What's that I hear? Creature came out in 2011. You're right. And if I had a show back then, it would have won. But it didn't. I didn't have a show. So, it's winning this year. And I've also decided it's retroactively won all the past years. <laughs> Because it's Creature. And you know what? I like Creature so damn much that every n other year that comes after this, the number one slot is going to have a big ol' asterisk next to it because that spot is actually reserved for Creature. And if you're pissy about it, then I guess you could just move Creed up into the number 10 slot and move everything up one and Mad Max Fury Road's the number one of the year. But you know what? Asterix, because it's actually Creature, and it always will be Creature. Creature, number one movie of the year. No questions about it. So now I leave you with a list of all the films that I mentioned here, and my prediction for what's going to be best next year, which is almost certainly going to be wrong, like it usually is. And for one more year, 
I'm Glenn Dyer, and you have been watching A Dyer Situation. Way you do it. You play the guitar on the end.